Hi and welcome to this video where I'll show you the new functions in Raya Pro 5. And I'm really excited about this because if we go to the Quick Blend tab, we'll see it looks completely different. We have these sliders and this is essentially channel blending. And it's a really, really simple way of blending exposures without luminosity masks, but still getting fantastic results. It's so simple we just have to move a slider to blend exposures. So before I start, I just want to show you I've got a darker exposure on top, which has plenty of the sky, and a brighter exposure on bottom, and I want to blend the two. With the darker exposure on top, I can choose any one of these sliders, move it right, and you'll see we start to blend the exposures. So that's before and after. And the more we move our sliders to the right, the more we make targeted adjustments. So let's say if I only wanted to put the sky from the darker exposure into the brighter exposure and I didn't want to affect any of the buildings, so I wanted the buildings nice and bright, I can bring all of these sliders all the way to the right. And the more to the right we are, the more targeted the adjustment. So now we're using the foreground of that brighter exposure and the sky from the darker exposure. And if it looks unnatural, which it does here, we can just play with the sliders until it looks okay. And this channel blending is accessing 16-bit exposure blending. So it's a fantastic way of coming up with really clean results. Now I just want to show you that the sliders do different things. So they are blending channels, which means they are blending in a different way. So here I've got three exposures. I've got a brighter exposure on top here, a darker exposure in the middle, and a base exposure. And you'll see I've got all these groups on top, gray, red, and green. That's because on the darker exposure here, I've applied a slider to each one of those groups. So let me show you what I mean. I've got this darker exposure selected and I can bring blue all the way along in the dark section. You see we've blended those exposures. But I think you'll agree that it doesn't look like a great blend. A lot of this building up here has become a little bit flat compared to the base exposure. So we've lost a bit of contrast. Now what happens if instead of using the blue slider, we blend with the green slider. And that's what I've done here. You see, we've got the same three exposures, but this time on the darker exposure, I've blended with the green slider. And this is what that result looks like compared to the blue slider. You see, there's a difference between the sliders. They're blending differently. And this is what the red slider looks like. That's different to the green one. And this is what the gray one looks like. That's different too. So each one comes out with its own result. Now, if I just delete those groups because I don't need them anymore, and I reset that darker exposure, we can begin to blend our exposures by bringing along these sliders. And by the way, blending exposures using this channel blending technique is exactly the same as luminosity masks in terms of preparing raw files. So using things like matching, for example. And I might find if I blend with that red slider, it looks pretty good, but maybe the water is a little bit dark. So I can bring up the green slider, and that seems to be brightening up the water. What if I bring the blue slider along? Well, that's done a pretty good job at restoring, believe it or not, the golden interior areas here. So these parts here. So watch, if I bring that along, it's brightening it up a little bit too much, so it looks fake. But if we bring it along just a little bit, I think that looks okay. Move that a little bit to the left. There we go. I zoom out. So you can see we can play with the sliders until we're happy. And I can bring the gray one along as well. And that might brighten the foreground. And that's before and after. Now in truth, I would actually brush out this foreground. Now if we were using luminosity masks, we could have made that change more targeted, more specific. But this is a much easier way of blending exposures in general. And so I can choose the brighter exposure now, make that visible. And with the bright section, again, I can bring along the slider. And all I want to do is try and restore the shadows, especially in the swimming pool here. So I'm just going to reduce these sliders until we've brightened up the image. And then I can reduce the opacity of this brighter exposure a little bit more. And then we've restored the information in the swimming pool at the bottom here in the tiles. And I think that looks good. So that's before 
and after. And all we did was manipulate a few sliders. To show you this as a different example, we've got a darker exposure here, a brighter exposure on top. And I can, let's say I start with a reds channel. I can move that all the way to the right. And that's done a pretty good job. But what if I want less of the tree and less of the rooftop in that exposure blending? What if I just want the sky in there and I don't want the tree or the roof to be affected? Well, let's try the green slider. Bring that along a little bit more. You see we're brightening the tree and the rooftop. So this is before and this is after. So we're making more targeted adjustments. And let's say I want to bring more of this tree through here in the background. Well, I can bring the blue along. You see we're brightening up the tree and the other areas. So there's before and after. And now we're only affecting the brightest parts of the image. So bringing the sliders along creates a more targeted adjustment, which are a little bit similar to, in some respects, a Brights 5 or a Bright 6 or a Brights 4 in luminosity masks. So when we make one change with the slider, it's global, it seems to affect much of the image, but if we make all of the sliders maximum, you see we make much more targeted adjustments just to the highlights. And the same is true for a brighter exposure when targeting shadows. So going back to this image, I want to show you another function I've added in Raya Pro 5, which is called Man Vignette. And this is the manual vignette I create and use all the time, which you've probably seen in my YouTube videos. And we've got a new folder here called Manual Vignette. We've got dark and bright. So I select the mask of the dark layer and I, with a white brush, just paint in that manual vignette. And of course, if it's a little bit strong, so we've underexposed those tiles, which we've worked hard to recover, I can create a black brush and just undo that a little bit. And then with the bright layer, we can do the same thing with a white brush at 100% opacity and a really big brush. We can just paint in along this area here and we're brightening it up. And so here's before and after. You see, we're shifting the balance of light towards the interior light source. I'm just going to delete that. And I'm also going to reset all of the changes we did here before, because I want to show you something else. Now, you may have noticed that in Quick Blend, we no longer have apply image in here, but we actually have that already in the hub itself. You see, we have this highlights button. So if we make the darker exposure invisible, press highlights, you see we've created a mask which is targeting the highlights. And if we press adjust, we can make that a more targeted or general mask. So we can still blend exposures using something which is pretty much identical to the apply image option. And we have a shadows option there as well. Now in Instamask, there's a couple of changes. Here you'll see map, X, and image. And map will show you what's selected in a luminosity mask. So let's say, for example, we build a Brights 3. In fact, I'm going to go to a Brights 1 first. And I want to see what areas are targeted in real terms when I start blending or brushing in a selection. I can press map and you see the map will show us via red color what's selected in the mask. And not only are the arches selected in the mask, but so is the top part. You see it's gone purple because that's also going to be partially affected. If I press X, that cancels map and you can see why that area is partially selected because it's gray. If I go to something like a Brights 5, which is much more contrasting, press map. Now you see we're only selecting the interior part of the image. So this is a great way to visualize the selection in your mask. And finally, let's go with the Brights 3 and let's imagine that we are creating a luminosity mask and we stumble upon a mask which actually we think would probably make quite a good image. Well, now I've created this option called image, which if we press it, that will convert your mask to an actual image in a separate window. So those are the new functions in Raya Pro 5. And as always, the update is completely free to existing users. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.